All right, guys, welcome to the channel, Three Amigos Motorsports. It's a Friday night here, so I got my first batch of parts installed here on my new KTM. If you haven't seen this yet, this is my new to me 2020 KTM 1290 Super Adventure R. Uh, got it with like 750 miles on it. I've only put about 100 miles on it so far myself, but absolutely love it. Very excited to get into some adventure riding this year. So I think you're gonna see a little bit more of that on the channel, but by no means going away from other bikes. So make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Otherwise, let's get started and see what I'm getting into. So my first worries for this bike is I know damn well I'm gonna drop it. So I wanted some extra protection for everything. Um, so first up, I got a KTM OEM skid plate because the plastic one they give you is like very lacking. You know, it doesn't cover the head pipe or anything underneath. Um, I was actually looking at the Outback motor tech pack to go with the crash bars uh, but by chance i found this on marketplace a town over brand new not installed yet for a hundred dollars uh fingers crossed some of the hardware was open but fingers crossed it's all here um so since i didn't get the outback motor tech skip plate i did still go with their crash bars so these are what i'm most excited to open up i got some stickers here i always like stickers So I looked at a lot of different brands. I know Heed, I think they're a European company. They make a nice crash bar that's a one piece. TourTech makes really good stuff, but I mean, they come $500 and they know they're stainless and everything, but they're powder coated. So these were 325, 345 shipped, powder coated orange. And uh, they add on two of the existing crash bars. So we'll dive into the packing a little bit more, but the idea with these is they clamp on kind of here and here somewhere. As you can see, bruises happen easily. I bought the bike like this, the guy already dropped it. But these are gonna come up more like this and they go all the way across the front here. And what I liked about the Outback Motor Tech is they, they brace in um, and tie in to some structure here. Somewhere in there, we're gonna look into this more and don't just free float. So we'll unbox these, but lastly, I quickly realized in the trail of riding behind your buddies, they're always roosting and stuff and rocks start flying. This KTM headlight's $800. Um, so I got myself, this is an OEM KTM clear polycarbonate headlight protector. Um, I know some of the companies make like the metal graded ones, which some bikes they look cool, but the KTM's headlight's so unique, I didn't want to hide that. so. This is clear and it's gonna go on, you know, like so. So I'm gonna keep unboxing everything and we'll get into it. Got everything open, nicely made stuff. Kinda already noticed that the orange on the Outback Motor Tech is a little different. So. <laughs> it doesn't look any different on camera. Probably not. It's close. I'll lose a little sleep at night, but it's all right. I like the way they're constructed in the way that they give you this center brace that helps tie these things together. Uh, headlight guard, I knew this was coming, but I have to drill a hole, I think, somewhere in there, but so be it. The other thing I forgot to mention is I got the uh, display schuss and flackled there. Close. You got that? Yeah, that was, that was close pronunciation. Which is just a uh, screen protector like you would for your cell phone for my uh, thing, screen. So, I don't know, I gotta pick something and see what I wanna put on first. Probably the crash bars. I think that's the most gratifying, so I'm gonna do those first. You got any instructions? I'm just a guy. I don't know if there's any instructions. Wing it? I don't know. <laughs> we'll edit this all out, we'll be right back. All right, so the first step here is to put it in this cross brace. So you see these bottom two holes there? They're gonna, this is gonna sit over that where these two Allen heads are. And then you actually have to pull down your steering dampener and per their instructions, it's a 10 meter, millimeter bolt uh, and these top tabs will sit back and the steering dampener will go back over it. So I'm gonna get this cross brace in. Step number uno. We got the hardest bracket on for these crash bars. 
I'm pretty sure they're supposed to come with instructions, but they did not. So I don't know if they just forgot to put them in the box or they expect me to print them or something. But going off of our own YouTube, another YouTube video before we make our own YouTube video. But uh, it's just a hard placement. So there's two bolts here and then you have to unbolt the steering stabilizer up there. It's just really hard to reach and get to as far as placement. So they tell you to put everything loose. So we're gonna fit up the main bars now and uh, hopefully it's easier from here. Got one side set up here. They recommend putting everything together loose and tighten it down once I'm ready to tighten the shit down. But you know what, we'll just show you on the other side. So, easiest to hang it from this tab that I added first. So, you guys kind of see where everything goes back together here. And uh, after that bracket behind the uh, forks and on the radiator is absolutely a pain. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. So, you can see we just get the rest of the clamps there and then uh, start snugging everything down because I even have these loose right now. So, I'll probably start from the top to bottom and just start snugging everything down. And uh, it's pretty simple, you just gotta watch your hardware. There's a couple shorter bolts here for the center union right here. And then two sets for the remaining two clamps. Simple. All right, so normally we tell you this is a piece of cake and easy and that we're just pros and we know exactly what we're doing. These couple of bolts in here, tightening those, cause you gotta try to get a nut in between the radiator cover and then on the tip of your finger, it's damn near impossible. Pain in the ass. So tightening that, that, that was uh, uh, an endeavor. But just trying to get everything centered now, kind of starting from top down and uh, straighten these all out. Uh, overall, I like the design because I do think these will be pretty strong tied in here. And I actually like that they stand out away wider than the uh, original ones. Give you a little impact zone. Uh, they could do better on the hardware. Some cheesy hardware. I stripped one of the bolts out. But, yeah, we'll wrap these up and then we'll be on to the next thing. All right, finished buttoning everything up. It's a little tweaked. It's hard to say on a bike that has been over on this side by the previous owner. So maybe when I whack on the other side, it'll straighten out. Uh, I like the design, but definitely could use some better hardware. As Matt said, the bolts have a Rockwell hardness of beef stew. Uh, what else? I don't know. Couple flaws with the, the uh, powder coat, but nothing the gravel won't fix. So, on to the skid plate. All right, I'm gonna take this plastic junk off. That's what I'm doing first. <laughs> and I might actually throw that through a window at your house. No. Why not? Heaven Move the screws. Um, you need foot pegs. Yeah, this is not a how to yeah. video. I don't want to do a how to why, video because then people ask me questions. Answer the question. And I gotta think, I act like I know what I'm talking about. And 90% of the time, I have no idea what I'm talking about. It was a fucking good time. Hold on. Uh, you know. Mount screw six, but do not tighten yet. <laughs> Riveting. Well, that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm missing a screw over there. So, so far, I'm impressed with these cast bits. Pretty beefy, a couple pounds each. So, these go on. So. These, this is KTM OEM. So made by a little blonde haired, blue eyed boy. Made in Austria. So these are made to kind of go around the head pipe there. And they're gonna hold the back of that skid plate up. So this side, you're just putting the bolt in that you just took out. But do not tighten. So we'll just. Oh, we don't want to. Oh, you strip that out. All right, so as you guys saw, we put just a bracket on either side that go around the head pipes. They just go a single stud there. We got them loose so they can, they're gonna receive those holes there. And then on the front, this is a multi-year fit, so there's different spacers, but it's basically just this crossbar across the front, um, ties into the factory crash bars. And we added the shortest spacers up like so. So I'm just threading this last bolt in here. And then, uh, you know, this goes into place after and six bolts in the front and six in the rear and piece of cake. We torqued the front down, 10 Newton meters, 
So all, my, all these uh, bolts are nice flush mount, same thing on the bottom. So it wants me to torque uh, these mounts next, something like 45 newton meters. Always gotta click it twice. So I'm gonna grab the other side, skids on, or screws on the bottom of the skid plate. And I think that's gonna about wrap this up. Looks pretty good. Looks more like an adventure bike. I'm happy that this is protected. That was my biggest worry is wouldn't take much to upset that. So I don't think I'm getting to the headlight tonight, but I'm gonna wrap up uh, these two things, double check everything. We'll get it out in the woods tomorrow. Update from there. Doing a little mock-up. Yes, sir. <coughs> All right, so it's day two. It's light out again. Yep. Didn't finish quite everything last night. We did go out for a ride today, so that was nice. So got a little time here. I'm gonna put this headlight protector on. And today was a perfect example. It was a good idea. We were on a paved road that turned into a dirt road and just riding a little bit close to somebody. You can just hear tink, 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 everything coming off the front, so. I like throwing rocks at Devin. I wanna protect this. <laughs> Um, so we finished up the skid plate last night. KTM does pretty good instructions. They're pretty easy to follow once you get to the English section. Um, so this thing's pretty straightforward. A couple eight millimeter bolts, um, a single nut cert that I do have to drill out here. Uh, it wants an eight millimeter hole, which we found out is 1764. Um, so essentially we're just lining this thing up. And I have to drill a hole, which is the scary part. And then there's just two, two little spacers and then there's some bolts over there that it reuses. And, I, and I'm not there and that's it. It's not quick to attach so you can clean, but. Junk. Looks good though. There's that's enough the problem, you're gonna get dirt and mud down there. It's I think there's enough there. space behind it though. You could still rinse the headlight off. You can rinse the headlight, but you can't scrub it, which means yeah. you're gonna have stains on the headlight. If you just get scrubbing bubbles. <laughs> so, it wants me to uh, mark this first, but I think I am gonna put the uh, bottom screws in loosely to get it centered because my OCD, I want this thing perfect. So I'm going to do that first and then I'll get this hole drilled. <laughs> He's going to be off by a quarter inch, no doubt. I have to order a second. <laughs> I have to order a new uh, windshield to drill through? Yeah. Or he sends a drill bit too far in and he hits, <laughs> he hits the gauges. Oh yeah, right into the back of that screen. Peely coil the plastic. <laughs> that being said, I got this from AOMC, uh, it's like $90. I found a discount code, I got it for like 80. And that's why I ended up buying some other stuff because I needed a hundred bucks for free shipping. So the screen protector and I bought gloves, so. Oh yeah, get a load of these things, where are they? Somewhere in that pile. Oh, they're gone. They disappeared. Oh, no, here they are. Look at this. This guy. Was, was there ever an orange Power Ranger? I don't think there was an orange Power Ranger, but he's getting close to being the one. first one. <laughs> Everything on this bike is Torx. So two little screws off from underneath the headlight there. And it wants to use these collar spacer thingy jigs. Very scientific here. So these little spacers to get the uh, distance right. Anybody want to put a hand on that for me? Assistance of Tony. Get as many fingerprints as you can on that. So yeah, they wanted me to drill it first, but I'm just going to loosely put these bottom screws in. I actually grab more threads than I, I thought they would. There's actually no getting it centered. It falls right into this groove here. Well, better safe than sorry. Well, if you tighten that up, pull it up and we're good to go. I don't even know if you need that top screw. Mm -mm. So just let it. This is highly calculated. Devin's, <laughs> Devin's gonna use his good eyeball. German spec. <laughs> so it is in the groove there. They say mark it, I'm just gonna center. Don't use your glass eye. This is the scary part. I gotta drill a hole. It's just a windshield. There's probably oh, a boy. play on the stud where you can just. There we go. He's committed now. 
Got my center mark. Can pull this back out of the way. I'm gonna have to make this headlight guard a two-part video. I know. <laughs> He's gonna be running out of material. This is the whole series now. Part seven. Still drilling. He did it! Yay! Let's hope that expands now. <laughs> well, you keep taking it in and out, but. I wonder if that was supposed to be a pressure fit. Yeah. Big hands. Yes, I'm out of hands. What? Right. Slap that on there. Go oh, there. It's off by about a half inch. You mean you should have got the mud off the headlight before you covered it. A pair of needle nose? Nope, I got it. So we got it? Yep. Just took a little pressure from the back side. It's in there now. So the hole ended up being 3 8 after converting 8 millimeters and 6 sides after that. I don't know if you want to snug that with a wrench. I'm uh, mad at myself because I'm a hair off, but I'll have to live with my OCD. You guys watch me mark it. I tried to center it. Which eye did you use? Yeah, but if you look at it straight on from the front of the bike, it's dead on. Like the... the... Yeah, but there's not much play right in here. It's no, yeah. Kind of just it's, off a, it's off barely noticeable there, but if you look down the light, it, it follows the light perfectly. So well, you must have some play in that rubber bushing. Dirt bike with a piece of plastic on it. Yeah. That is it. Bike guard, nothing too fancy. There's fingerprints under there. So it sits out enough. I imagine you can, you know, you could rinse to get your headlight clean. But I just wanted something there so that rock doesn't take out the headlight because the headlight's about 800 bucks. So that is it. Complete protection for the KTM. Headlight guard, crash bars, and my skid plate. Uh, after this video, I'm going to throw on my screen protector. You guys get how that works, just like a cell phone screen protector. I'm going to lay that on. So That will make sure there's fingerprints underneath it first. Oh, look at all the fingerprints now. Oh, That's yeah. great. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below. we got a lot more stuff coming this year. Should have bought a Hibusa. How do I shut this thing off?